These four snakes bite the most people in the world. But they're not nearly as well known as the Australian hypervenomous snakes. While Australia's snakes are deservedly recognized for their venom, these snakes are responsible for far more bites globally, making them deadlier in terms of actual impact on humans. So why are these beautiful snakes so poorly known? And what can we do to understand them better to protect them and ourselves? These are the big four snakes of India. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. You've probably heard of the magnificently venomous Australian snakes that have enough venom to kill multiple people. The inland taipan of the Australian outback has venom so lethal that a single bite could in theory kill 100 people. The tiger snake has a 50% untreated bite mortality. And the eastern brown snake kills the most people in Australia with about two lethal bites a year. These are very dangerous snakes, but thankfully very few people get bitten by them compared to India's big four. These four snake species kill at least 40,000 people a year, with some estimates putting that number at over 100,000. India is home to over 300 snake species, but these four caused virtually all fatalities. They're found throughout the country and live perilously close to human settlements in rural areas. So what are these snakes and why are they so deadly? Let's start with the most recognizable of them, the Indian Cobra. These guys are widespread across South Asia, except in tall mountains and arid deserts. They're only half the size of the king cobra, which, by the way, is not a real cobra, but they're much deadlier. Indian cobras live wherever there's rodents, and rodents live wherever there's humans. They're easily recognizable by their large hood and eye spots on their backside. They're also quite beautiful and a common companion of snake charmers. The snakes follow the rhythmic movement of the pipe and sense the tapping on the floor. Often, the snakes are also starved and dehydrated, and some have their fangs removed. So please, don't support these types of shows that endanger wildlife. The Indian cobra's main prey are rats and other rodents, and their venom is optimized to paralyze their prey and stop their heart almost instantly. In humans, this venom can cause respiratory failure and cardiac arrest. And yet, mortality rates of untreated bites can be as low as 10% in some areas. The issue is that they're so widespread that they're believed to bite tens of thousands of people every year. Similarly, the common crate, a beautifully ringed snake with similar prey and range, causes thousands of deaths every year. These snakes are generally docile and would rather roll into a ball than fight or get into any kind of trouble. But once the sun sets, something flips inside of them and they become hungrier, more aggressive, and more likely to bite. Most people get bitten while walking outside at night. The bite doesn't hurt as much as other snakes and that unfortunately gives people a false sense of security. Most people go to bed but the effects happen hours later, with cramps and paralysis leading to respiratory failure in about five hours. Common crates have one of the highest mortality rates for untreated bites at about 80%, but because of their nocturnal nature and the fact that their bites aren't super painful, many people make the mistake of not seeking medical assistance. This is a staple of lethal bites, with people not recognizing the severity of the bite or not having access to medical professionals, which is unfortunately true for many people in the most remote parts of South Asia. The third of the big four snakes is the saw-scaled viper. These dudes look dangerous. Their big eyes and characteristic diamond-shaped head make them, along with the Indian cobra, the poster child of venomous snakes in South Asia. When a saw-scaled viper gets into defensive posture, it coils itself into a figure eight with its head at the middle. While doing this, its scales rub against each other, making a warning rasping sound. Then they get in position to snap. 
and it does with little provocation. They are small, at just about 60 centimeters long, shorter than your laces, but are just short-tempered and venomous enough to earn them a spot among the big boys. Since saw-scaled vipers are small and their prey is even smaller, they don't have as much venom, and their bite mortality rate in humans is just about 20%. But their effects can be long-lasting. The venom is hemotoxic and causes internal bleeding. When it's injected into the lizards that they eat, this leads to a quick death. But in humans, it's much more gruesome. In some people, their bites lead to bleeding through some or all orifices, and blood in all bodily fluids. This can lead to acute kidney damage. So, as with all snakes in this episode, immediate medical attention is absolutely necessary. Finally, we have Russell's viper. This is the single snake species with the most confirmed bites in India. Like cobras and crates, they eat rats and are attracted to the human settlements which are home to a great number of rodents. They're found throughout the subcontinent and are easy to spot because of their distinctive oval-shaped markings along their body. Like saw-scaled vipers, their venom causes internal bleeding and, in some cases, permanent kidney damage. This venom is so good at clotting blood that it's used in labs to test blood for lupus anticoagulants. And it's an important diagnostic tool for this autoimmune disease. This snake alone causes almost half of all confirmed snake bites in India, and tens of thousands of deaths a year. So what do all of these snakes have in common? Their venoms are very powerful, and they live in areas close to human settlements. Indian cobras are active during the day, when people are going to work or school. Common crates are active at night, and most people don't spot it until it's too late. Saw-scaled and Russell's vipers are irritable and like to hide in farms and fields, which puts them in contact with farmers. Rainy lowlands, like the tropical forests of eastern India, are especially dangerous due to these snakes. And yet, there is a human element to these bites. There are awareness campaigns to promote the use of flashlights and rubber boots and gloves. This could prevent hundreds of thousands of bites. Additionally, better anti-venom distribution, storage, and training in rural areas could lower mortality rates even more. India has a goal of slashing the number of yearly deaths by half by the year 2030. And just a last reminder that these beautiful creatures are just trying to protect themselves. And it's easier to learn to cohabitate than to hate them for their natural instincts. I hope that you remember this episode if you ever find yourself in South Asia and take measures to prevent bites from the big four. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Also, if you want to learn more about snakes, make sure to check out this episode where I went into the largest snake den in North America. Thanks for watching. See ya! Hey everyone, we have exciting news. We're thrilled to announce the release of Animal Logic's very first book, Strange Creatures. This book dives into the most incredible animals we've ever featured on the show, with each chapter packed with my illustrations and stunning full-color images. It's a fun and engaging way to learn about the animal kingdom, and a perfect tool to spark kids' interest in science. Each chapter breaks down an animal's biology, behavior, and all the coolest facts you need to know about these fascinating creatures. Animalogic's Strange Creatures is a must-have addition to your own library, or the perfect gift for an animal lover this upcoming holiday season. Click the link in the description to check it out, and if you can, pre-order a copy. Pre-ordering would help us get an extra bump in the Amazon algorithm, and that would mean the world to us. So thank you so much.